Okay, so our next guest is David K. Hill. David K. Hill. Come, Come on, on in, David. In. Uh, David is the principal at Diligence, um, former Wall Street analyst, at, uh, former M&A guru uh, at EMC. Get close. Get nice and okay, close. Okay, this is SiliconAngle.com, so the worldwide leader in tech innovation. We go on the ground here with the Cube. We're in the summer tour, 2011. We've been at EMC World, been at SAP Sapphire. We've been at uh, here at Synergy. We're going to Citrix Live. We're going to HP Discover. We're going to the Dell Forum. We got Apple talking to us. A lot of other events coming in, in the summer, end of summer, in the fall. VM World coming up around the corner. The queue, we extract the knowledge from our guests and we share that with you. We ask them the tough questions. We talk. We talk. We talk tech in depth. David, you're out in the ground. You obviously know a lot about the inside baseball in the tech business. First question I want to ask you is, uh, what's your impression of Citrix? Obviously, laying out a very compelling vision, a lot of meat on the bone, a lot of cool stuff to be to that's being discussed. Obviously, virtualization at the edge, Apple Envy, they support Windows uh, and Microsoft relationship. Just overall, what's going on with Citrix? Uh, these guys got their hands in a lot of buckets right now. They tell a good story. They, they tell a, a network story with NetScaler. They tell a desktop story with uh, VDI. They tell a cloud story uh, with Zen. And they tell a SaaS story. Uh, with the collaboration piece. So they have a lot of pieces covered. Um, I think they're pretty strategic in each of those areas. They have good go-to-market relationships in each of those areas, and they seem to be executing. Um, they're in a good spot right now. They're in a great spot. The market's shifted in their direction. Obviously, they were once battling head-to-head -head with VMware, but that doesn't seem like a big deal anymore, is it? Or I, isn't it? I, I, I think it is, actually, still. Um, I think they're, they're ahead on the desktop. I think what's interesting, though, is they are potentially the counter to VMware uh, with the platform level in the cloud. And that's what's interesting for Citrix is these guys start to counter VMware's monopolistic behavior in the cloud. And uh, we've seen this before. Um, the answer is Zen. And so Zen's getting some more attention. It could also be KVM, but for now Zen's getting more attention in that Wh regard. What do, you, what do you mean by VMware's monopolistic behavior? You mean just, just pushing VMware well, ubiquity? Cl cloud Foundry for yeah. VMware, in my view, is... It's uh, Hypervisor 2.0. We've seen it before. They said we could give away the Hypervisor here. I mean, it's the, it's the cloud operating system, the, the pass layer. And that's what VMware's doing is essentially giving that piece away for free. Um, before with the Hypervisor model, they said we're going to charge for the Hypervisor. It eventually got commoditized, but they owned that anyway. With pass, they're doing the same thing, only now here it's free. That's uh, you know, for VMware to dominate the the cloud like they did the hypervisor, that's problematic for a lot of guys. And so I think the, the response is to look to guys that are can stand up against that from a service provider realm and also just from an enterprise realm. And Zen, Zen's the answer to that. Yeah, what I was saying, isn't that a playbook out of Zen? I mean, isn't, right, right? I mean, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is the Zen playbook, but right. but that people don't, people saw VMware win this, win this game once and they don't want to win it again. So they don't want to let them win it again, whether it be HP, IBM, Oracle. Do they have ah. a lead? Do they have a lead? I mean, does, VMware have a lead? I yeah, mean, can absolutely. they win it? VMware has a lead, and, and, and they can win it. And they have good momentum on the enterprise yeah, side. Uh, the cloud's up for grabs. Desktop's up for grabs. So you're talking about the immense value creation that VMware was able to, to deliver um, at the potential, I wouldn't say expense, but at the lost value creation of, to guys like IBM and HP, they, don't, they just don't want to let them walk away with it again. That's your point about monopolistic yeah, that's right. behavior. They, okay. they, they crushed it on the enterprise side. And now guys have a chance to not let them do it again in the cloud at the platform. Was level. that the greatest acquisition in the history of the technology business? Absolutely. Is it, is it, did I you mean, do that that deal? No, I had nothing to do. I had nothing to do with it. Absolutely. I take zero credit for that. I mean, uh, everyone else is taking credit. You might as well jump right <laughs> in. Stu took know? credit for it. No, it's <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, they, they basically bought the server without buying the hardware. And th they own the server effectively without having to pay for any of the of the liquid ass of the assets of the tangible assets. So, Dave, uh, uh, John and I were talking, but we're speculating. We love to speculate and talk about you know who's going to buy whom. So, is is Citrix acquisition proof right now? Uh, they're pretty expensive. So at fifteen billion, it's just you don't see anybody taking them out because uh, stocks run Microsoft up a lot. Maybe I mean they need some help. They're they're marching. They got all kinds of new things going on. Microsoft could swoop right in. I think the assets absolutely interesting to a lot of guys. Anyone that's getting compromised on the desktop, anyone that doesn't have a mobile play, um, anyone that doesn't have an F5 uh, equivalent on the network side, um, would look at this asset and be interested by it. But looking at 15 billion is a different story. A and maybe they don't want to swallow all four. 
components of those pillage. business at once, and they'll just start picking out of the um, out of the private ecosystem as opposed to spending fifteen billion. Because that's, I mean, if you a year ago it was half of that. So let's wait a year, let the froth come off a bit. I don't think so. I mean, I think it's going to go north. I mean, they're in good position. You think it's overvalued right now? Uh, Valuation's relative. <laughs> I mean, I don't relative to what? I mean, no. It, relative to LinkedIn. In relative to LinkedIn. In your opinion, yeah. you're, you're an M and A guy. I mean, at least you used to be. Would you Would you look for better buying opportunities? I don't think you here? you don't chase it here. Yeah. I mean, you don't. It, it, you know, strategic. If you miss it, you miss it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I mean, I don't so know that you it. can outlay 20 billion or 15 billion, whatever numbers you were throwing it'd around. It'd take 20 to get, wouldn't to, you think? To do I mean, that. So the 15 billion dollar valuation wouldn't it take? I at don't least think. Guy, yeah, and guys aren't going to let it go easily. But yeah. but no one's going to throw 20 billion out there. So, um, so for now, anyway, they're acquisition proof. Yeah, I mean, un until they, you know, if they really start to get real headway, and, and, and it becomes a necessity, right? If these guys start to own the cloud with Zen, um, if they if they start to separate themselves on the desktop side, um, Netscaler continues to innovate. Uh, there's lots of interesting stuff there, and and, and so. You know, th th they'll be able to name their price if they keep executing. But for now, you know, each piece by itself is hurting people, but not collectively hurting everybody. So, um, I think th people will just watch, right? It's a, it's not an urgent acquisition for anyone, until someone completely gets screwed and needs a desktop play. You know, but you know, D Dell's doing okay on their own right now, or seems to be getting things in the right direction. Right. What about OpenStack? I mean, obviously, you know, we talk about the developer market, uh, which we're hot on. I'm, I'm in Silicon Valley, and you know, it's hot to talk about, you know, things like that. When you see things like LinkedIn going public, and you saw um, Heroku with the Salesforce, and you know, the emerging Spring went to VMware, um, Spring Source. This is a really frothy and active, r and real developer community looking for a home. Um, OpenStack is an open cloud. What do you make of that? Any perspective i mean i say i love the idea nasa's involved rack is involved but it's so early i mean is it just a sandbox i think it's a sandbox now i mean you got 70 vendors behind it uh, citrix today announced olympus project olympus which is pretty cool it's a uh, zen server um plus you get the um uh, OpenStack project so it's going to be zen zen software um design reference designs from dell hardware and then services from rackspace and I assume it's going to be cloud builders from Rackspace that's going to go in on site, take those three components as a reference. That's the earliest access program specs, by the way. It can look different than that over time. But, I mean, when you start to package this idea and concept up and start taking it to market as something that's more digestible than just this kind of nebulous thing yeah, that is open It's more proven. I mean. Yeah, and, and I'm skeptical of standards. Standards are ways for big vendors to slow progress. So, yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> you know. I mean, you got a love fest of 70 <laughs> vendors all claiming to be the anchor tenant of that deal. Yeah, can I you mean, just. I mean, come on, Rackspace, NASA, and it's now Citrix? Picture that standards meeting with 70 people trying to make a decision. <laughs> I mean, it's a, yeah. uh, conceptual, I think it's really interesting. If you could take these concepts and, and, and get them into a, a package where guys can now stand up private clouds, um, based on those components, then then that's disruptive and that's real, and that's borrowing from the concepts that these web guys are, are teaching us. Yeah, and they're putting real investment in it too. I mean, it's just uh, these things don't just come out these reference architectures. They take some some engineering. And well, Cisco put a lot of investment in FCOE. Yeah, <laughs> how'd that work? <laughs> well, I mean, throwing money at it's not the issue. You got to have the well, organic. Well, that's a that's a different discussion, but you know. <laughs> there are those that argue that the jury's still out. I mean, you know. No, I think, I mean, if you get real momentum on the enterprise side, I mean, the, the, the reason, you know, FCOE is a different story, right? But there, guy, that was a, 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 um, a solution without a problem, necessarily. I mean, if guys really start trying to fix um, the enterprise architectures and anyone wants to build a private cloud isn't going to be able to kind of back these existing legacy architectures into it. And, and so OpenStack is one of the quickest answers to get there, potentially, if they get it right. If they get it right, and I think it looks good. I mean, there seems to be good momentum around it. We like at OpenStack. We like Rackspace. Um, but again, to me, it's just a, a, an early sandbox. Uh, to me, those the cards haven't hit the table yet in terms of who's going to do what in that and the benefits to a developer. Right. I mean, and, and whether it extends to the mainstream, too. I mean, what's the appetite for the mainstream to actually start getting their hands dirty or dirtier than they have and, and build these things on their own? Who was... What does Citrix have to do? I mean, outside of the tech business, Citrix is known as kind of a conglomerate. They have Zen under there on the open source side, and they've been in the collaboration space with some of their other products. But, you know, Zen, I mean, uh, Citrix is not known outside the mainstream. I mean, people touch GoToMeeting. Yeah, okay, 100 million. That's a cool number to throw out there. That's the number that, that they're throwing out there. 100 million people have touched Citrix. Okay, someone uses GoToMeeting once. That's 100 million people. Okay, you get the numbers. But they don't really know who Citrix is as a brand. I mean, so... 
they're in a good position. I agree with you. But what do they have to do from your your perspective? How would you see them succeeding? What do they need to do to be successful? Well, from a brand standpoint, I mean, I think brand's different than, than just pure execution. Just I mean, you know, on the business side. I mean, e Execution-wise and, and strategy, I think they're uh, – it feels to me like they're – they have you know the chips spread around and, and doing some good things. Branding wise, today we prefer generally as a as a whole to pay a lot more for you know sexy shiny consumer objects, right? And, and I don't know that Citrix is ever going to fully play in that space. Um, like a, I mean, whatever, a Facebook or whatever new smartphone you're talking about, where they could potentially do it is with something like a receiver on iPad, right? And, and you know an example I would throw out would be like a Log Me In. Log Me In is a it's a SaaS infrastructure management company. But the moment they threw that thing on iPad in the app store for 15, 20 bucks an app, I mean, the thing went viral and the stock went straight up. And so, I mean, if Citrix can attach themselves to the iPad store and, and bring your own and PC. And they are doing it, clearly. Yeah, and I mean. it, it bring your own PC. I mean, Citrix drives this thing. Consumerization of IT, these guys are, are right here, you know, at, you know, driving some of that disruption. So wh where do you see that going? So Citrix becomes the sort of, infrastructure apps that you download from the, the, the iTunes or App Store, do you ever see them becoming that platform? I mean, a, a, a version of that for the enterprise, an app store for the enterprise? Well, n not so much an app store, but like enabling the, the cloud or browser. Ba we were just talking about this before. I mean, what's when you open a Chromebook and you want to get some of your enterprise apps, what are you using? Citrix Receiver, right. browser-based. Their new browser-based version they just announced. So, I mean, that's pretty slick in that regard. And then you extend that to the iPad and the demo today they were throwing up um, the enterprise. They, they showed the receiver accessing a you know, box, my box, which is a box net drive, Dropbox, Dropbox and also your enterprise right, drives. Right. So I mean, Citrix is the, uh, I think they called it the front door to the cloud, right? Or the front door to the data yeah, center. Yeah, Netscaler is the back door. You got Cloud Bridge in the back end, and you got the the, the other front door. Piece. Yeah, that's the front door to the cloud, back door to the data, whatever it was. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> the, 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 the fact is, it, it's an interface. It right. So so. It's an, yeah, we were talking off off camera about who are Citrix competitors. You mentioned VMware, obviously F5 for the Netscaler stuff, but doesn't Microsoft want to be the front door to the cloud? Y yeah, they do. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of and Microsoft. You don't consider them a competitor of Citrix at this point, right? Well, well Microsoft comp you know doesn't compete with anyone until they do, right? <laughs> I mean, and there's a bunch <laughs> of right. kind of opportunistic <laughs> companies that surround Microsoft. Yeah. And take advantage of you know their just slower development cycles. Quest has built a business on supplementing yeah, Microsoft. And you're saying Citrix is one of them. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, I think Citrix has become more strategic because you know when as guys see the kind of client OS getting marginalized, then then guys like Citrix that come in become a lot more interesting to guys like Microsoft. And you know, eventually at some point it becomes just too interesting that they have to own it, and that's a different discussion. All right, David, we're out of time. Um, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Awesome. I knew you'd be awesome. We'd love to have you back. Yeah, he's got great Q potential, Dave. He he's good. <laughs> <laughs> You're really good on theCUBE. Anytime you want to come on theCUBE, we'd love to have your perspective. It's really right to the heart. It's good. It's accurate. Very factual and deep. We appreciate the uh, time on theCUBE. And uh, if you're around tomorrow, swing by. All right. And we'll All get right. your uh, second take on the second half of this uh, the conference. So good thanks.